Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about what happens when atoms of different elements lose or gain electrons and why they might do that and how we represent that when we want to write that down uh, to show what is going on with an atom. So ions are atoms that have gained or lost electrons. So uh, whether an atom gains or loses electron, we're going to end up with two types of ions. One type of ion where they gain electrons, the other type where they lose. So these two types of ions that we're going to create when we gain or lose electro electrons are called cations or anions. So cations are positive, and you can remember this because cats have paws. And cations are the result of a loss of electrons when the atom forms an ion. And this is because normally in atoms we have the same number of protons in the nucleus as we have electrons around the outside. So when we take away those electrons, we now have one more positive charge than we have negative charge around that atom. So the overall charge on that atom would be positive. So that makes this a cation because we have lost electrons. Now this of course means that the opposite is going to give us the anions and these are atoms that are negatively charged. And these anions are going to result from the gain of electrons. So just like before with a regular neutral atom of an element, we would have the same number of protons as we would have the number of electrons around the outside. So we'd have a neutral atom, but when we add in more electrons for different reasons, we now have more negative charges than we have positive charges. So we have a negatively charged atom that we would call an anion because it has gained electrons. Now the reason atoms are going to gain or lose electrons at all is because of something called the octet rule. It's another way of uh, saying things want to have a full or empty last shell of electrons just like the noble gases did. So if we use oxygen, for example, from the periodic table, we want to figure out the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. So its atomic number is eight. Its atomic number is eight, which means it has eight protons in its nucleus. And that means it's also going to have eight electrons going around its orbits or energy shells. And then we're going to figure out the number of neutrons by taking a look at the atomic number, 15.994 for oxygen, and subtract from that the atomic mass because we're gonna take uh, the nucleus and we're gonna take the number of protons away from that. And then once we round off, we should be able to get the number of neutrons. So 15.994, it's kinda like 16. Subtract eight from that, that's gonna give us eight neutrons. So if we do our bohr rutherford diagram, we are going to take our number of protons and neutrons and put those in the nucleus. And now we're going to go ahead and put those electrons filling our energy shells from the inside out as we go. So there we go. We can see I have eight electrons. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those in the shell. So uh, two in the first orbit. And then I'm going to fill, start to fill in uh, the second orbit around oxygen. I'm going to fill them in at 12 o'clock, at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And then I'm going to start pairing them up the same way. So 12 and 3. So there's our Bohr-Rutherford diagram for oxygen. And we can see that we have some spots in the electron shell down here and over here where we have some lone electrons that don't have a buddy or don't have a pair. And this means that oxygen could take two more electrons to fill its last shell. So in certain cases, in both those spots, 
if there are elements around that might lose electrons, and we'll look at why they might lose electrons in a little bit, um, oxygen has a spot where it can grab two electrons from another element to fill its last shell. So for example, to fill its last shell, if there's another element that has two electrons, oxygen could steal those and buddy them up. And now we have an oxygen atom that has a full last shell. It has completed its octet rule. It's filled up its last shell and has gone to eight valence shell electrons. So it's fulfilled its octet rule. It's happy and it's gotten there by gaining two electrons. So the octet rule is really just a way of asking if an element uh, for its last shell, its valent shell, will go to zero or will it go to eight? And it will do whichever is easiest. If it's easiest to lose two electrons to go down to zero, it'll do that. If it's easiest to gain three to go all the way up to eight, it will do that too, but it will do whatever is easiest. So oxygen here has gained two electrons to go up to eight. So it has a full valence shell. So the next thing we want to do with these ions is we want to be able to write them uh, to let people know that we're dealing with an ion instead of an atom of a normal element. And to do that, all we're going to do is we are going to write down the symbol of our element. So in this case for oxygen, it is the letter O as capital. And then we're going to do something to show everyone that it has become an ion. And to do that, we're going to put something up in the top right hand corner of that element symbol. We're going to put a positive or a minus sign to tell everyone it's become an ion. We're going to put a positive sign if it lost electrons. And we're going to put a negative sign if it gained. So since oxygen gained two electrons, we're going to put a minus sign. And then to tell everybody it gained those two electrons in blue on our diagram, we are just simply going to write in the number of electrons it gained. So there we go. So we have written the sim has gained two extra electrons because of the octet rule. And it is an ion that has fulfilled its last shell or valent shell. So that's how we apply the idea of ions, the octet rule, and how we communicate whether something is an ion to everybody. You'll still have the same number of protons and neutrons. That hasn't changed. It will just have a different number of electrons in its last shell. And, it will either, and each element will either go to zero or to eight, whichever one is the easier, shorter trip. And that is called the octet rule.